minnow baits, stick baits, jerk baits, those slender, shallow running fish catching machines go by many names. And today on Retro Bass, I'm going to crack open my Plano 6803 tackle box, which is filled with old school floating minnows. And we're also going to take a look at the unique history of that awesome bass catcher. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. <sighs> Welcome to Retro Bassin, and thank you all for tuning in on this weekend morning. So I want to give you a little uh, preview into just how we come up with episodes on this channel and perhaps a, a little insight into that crazy brain of mine. I'm actually planning a, a little trip down to Florida to hook up with a bass and bud of mine by the name of Ted Lincoln. Ted actually has a really cool YouTube channel, has a knack for catching some like Doug Hannon size Florida bass. And he has been a subscriber to this channel since I think it had like a hundred subscribers. Ted and I have been talking on Instagram uh, for a pretty good bit over the years and we finally are going to put a fishing trip together. In the preparation for that trip, I asked Ted about some of the lures that I should be bringing with me to Florida, and he mentioned one of his favorite techniques this time of year is to throw a golden floating minnow bait into some open vegetation pockets for largemouth bass. Well, uh, that got me immediately digging through my old school collection. I have a lot of baits in this box that had a lot that were packed away as well and spent about a week pretty much digging up every OG uh, floaty minnow bait that I could. And then like any good rabbit hole, I tended to go into it a little bit deeper and reach out to my buddy Terry Battisti who runs the Bass Fishing Archives website. Terry is a great source for any kind of information on old school baits and honestly, I, I like this stuff but I'm not necessarily like the textbook expert of it. So when I've got a question about the origins of a particular bait, Terry is pretty much my go-to guy. Well, just like about any a good rabbit hole, it definitely got deeper and wider. And over the next few days, Terry and I had a really good discussion on the origins of the floating minnow bait. And he also sent me in the direction of an article that he wrote uh, for Bass Fishing Archives about that very subject. Well, fast forward two weeks after some pretty in-depth discussions with both Ted and Terry, on the floating minnow bait. Uh, we might have missed a weekend upload in the process, but here we are. We're gonna take a deep dive into the history of the floating minnow bait with a big shout out to Terry and Bass Fishing Archives. I will link Terry's great article down below in the video description, and there are actually a couple of other uh, good articles as well on the subject, and I'll link those too. Before we crack open my Plano Tackle Box, I do want to point you guys over to Terry's latest venture, and that is the Big Bass Podcast, which he does every Thursday with outdoor writer Ken Duke. It is actually a really cool podcast that just got started, 100% dedicated to big fish and very often historical big fish as well. So I will give you a quick look at my tackle box. Uh, it is definitely loaded with some old school gold that will go into a lure by lure and brand by brand. Well, there is little doubt about who invented the floating minnow bait and that distinct honor goes to Finnish commercial fisherman, Lori Rapala, who crafted his first Finnish minnow, the Rapala, in 1936. His invention slowly gained popularity in Europe, but it wasn't until 1959 when Minnesota anglers Ron Weber and Ray Ostrom brought the Rapala minnow to the U.S. market under the Normark Corporation. But things really blew up for Rapala in 1962 when Life magazine published an article on the floating minnow titled, A Lure Fish Can't Pass Up. And thanks to the unfortunate death of Marilyn Monroe and corresponding cover story, that issue would go on to be the highest selling issue in the magazine's history. And the Rapala Minnow 
took off from there. I definitely have more than a few OG Rappelas in my collection. I'll get a few of these out to show you that unique bait. I've got a couple of different sizes of the old school Rappala and we'll go ahead and start with the small one first, which is in the original OG Rappala box. This is a pretty cool box. It says the original Rapala Wobbler, uh, the original Finnish Minnow. And I'll show you this box from a couple of different angles. Try not to shake the lure because I'm so excited. <laughs> I do that too often, I'm sorry. Here is the back of the package. There's also a little price tag on here. What did they sell that thing for back in the day? Uh, let's see here, doesn't say. Pretty beat up box, but the middle inside is clean. So here is the smaller version of the Rapala Minnow. And I've held newer Rapalas. There's definitely something very delicate about the original. It is a really finessey, thin balsa bait. We can see that it's got the uh, classic white belly where they put in the uh, lure hangers. Nice silver pattern. I think that originally used to be a piece of metallic uh, chewing gum wrapper. Uh, this model's probably a little bit different. We've got the hand-painted gill on the nose and nice classic Rapala bill. And it does say Finland on the bottom. What's interesting about these Rapala bills, and I'll hold up a couple different ones, is that the Rapala minnow was tank tested, it still is actually to this day, and any sort of fine tuning was done there at the factory. You'll notice that this bill has a little bit shaved off the lip. That is not actually a manufacturing error so much as uh, when they tested this thing, it was probably tracking a little bit to one side. They took a little shave off it to make it track true. It's definitely a light bait. And one of the ways to fish this was with a weight ahead of it, which actually makes sense because this thing would be tough to cast unless you're using like an ultralight spinning rod. And we'll go ahead and open a big one as well. So here is the larger model. I think this might be the what? The four and a half incher in the nice uh, OG Rapala box. It's got a description on the back as well. And this one does have a price. This one was for uh, $2.25 at Sears. <laughs> Lori originally carved this bait out of cork and later balsa. And his entire goal was to have it mimic the movements of natural bait fish. During the early 60s, this bait was definitely hard to come by, and Terry even referenced it in his article on Bass Fishing Archives. But when tackle shops didn't have enough to sell, they rented them. And they rented baits like this for upwards of $25 a day. There are some pretty detailed instructions in here, so we'll take a look at how to fish the old school Rapala minnow. So according to the instructions, this bait can either be deep water trolled, you can deep water jig it or slow troll it. You can steady retrieve it or cast it with a split shot ahead of the bait. Or the one that I want to get into, you can use it as a surface popping lure. Let's see what it says. Cast lure close to edge of weed beds next to logs or other cover. Allow the rapala to rest about 15 seconds. Twitch the lure lightly to simulate a struggling crippled minnow. Allow a second or two rest. Retrieve the lure with a slight twitching or pumping motion of the lure as it floats to the surface and then dives, as if it is struggling to swim. Surface popping allows many variations of retrieve. Be sure and fish slowly. This is a good method for night fishing. And just like that, the minnow bait boom was started. Just like any successful lure, copycats were soon to follow. According to the Bass Fishing Archives, one of the first was the Bangalore, released from Florida lure designer Jim Bagley in 1961. The balsa wood Bangalore was definitely not just a cheap knockoff of the Rapala. It was overbuilt with straight through wire harness, two sealer coats, aluminum foil, and 11 coats of epoxy, as well as a nose ring for improved action. While most balsa baits at the time were relatively light, Bagley's production process led to a heavier and easier to cast lure. I do not have any original Bangalores in my collection at the moment, but I do have one of the re-release models. I think this was probably from around 2010. 
and this is the spinner model of the Bangalore. This is definitely a, a balsa model for sure. Uh, it has got the nice foil finish, and I would say that's actually relatively uh, similar shape to the OG Bangalore. This bait definitely feels more substantial to me than the Rapala, and I will hold up both side by side so you can get a little bit of a size comparison of the two. Uh, there is the Bangalore, and there is the Rapala, and yes, these two baits definitely fill the same niche when it comes to bass fishing. Well, I'm sure in the aftermarket conditions, a OG Bangalore goes for a lot more than a Rapala, but at the time, this was actually the more cost-effective model of the two. The next notable imitation minnow imitation was the amazing Rebel Minnow. The lure that actually launched Rebel Lures and the Plastic Research and Development Corporation, or Pradco, in 1962. Reportedly, Pradco owner George Perrin, an avid bass angler, was unhappy with the inconsistencies of wooden minnows and sought out a more duplicatable bait. In the All Plastic Rebel, he found just that. I do have a couple of OG Rebel minnows in my collection, and here is one that most closely mimics that original Rapala floating minnow. This one came in a nice Rebel package, still in the package, and there is a silver floating minnow. And this was F2001. Let's crack this thing open. So here is the all-plastic Rebel Minnow, and as far as I know, this is the first all-plastic version of a minnow bait. My research on this had a couple different dates about when this thing came out, but Terry seems to think this is definitely a 1962 or later bait. Like all Rebels at the time, it does have that famous sort of line sides design. Very simple plastic bait with just sort of a silver side, a uh, white belly to mimic the Rapala black back, a couple of eyes, and even the gill or we'll say mouth sort of spots on that really are meant to mimic the Rapala. This bait feels a little bit more substantial. I'll hold it side by side with the Rapala so you guys can get a nice appreciation of how these two baits look when you compare them. So there is the amazing minnow over top of the old school Rapala. And yeah, this is definitely a side-by-side -side I'm really curious to try out on the water. Growing up, I definitely had much more exposure to the Rebel bait than the Rapala for whatever reason. And I've definitely caught a bass or two on this guy. So we'll compare these from a couple different angles. Here are the two noses of the baits. <laughs> Very cool. And then also there they are from underneath. So it is really hard to mention the Rebel Minnow without talking about the knockoff of the knockoff, and that is the Bill Norman Linebacker. Bill Norman actually worked as a lure designer for Pradco in the 1960s and left to start Rebel Manufacturing and manufactured some Pradco lookalikes with names that also sounded a whole lot like the originals, including the Reb 1 and the Reb 2. Well, this resulted in an immediate lawsuit, and Norman was ordered to change the names of both his new company and his lures. But even for me, it's really hard to tell the difference between the Rebel Minnow and the Norman Linebacker. I don't have any Norman Linebackers in my current lineup, but I do have this one, which is a Bill Norman Jerkbait. Uh, this is a later model in a Pretty saucy color, by the way. I think I picked this thing up at Discount Fish and Tackle in Denver. And this is a Bill Norman Floating Variety Minnow. I will hold it up with the Rebel, just so you can kind of get a good size comparison of the two. And why not? I'll add the old Rapala into the mix. So we can start to see all the different variations of this minnow bait. There are some pretty consistent themes with these baits, as I'm sure you're noticing. They are long and slender. The vast majority of them come with three treble hooks, a short little diving lip, and a nose ring. This one has eh, a little bit of a swoop in the back, though. I don't know if that's just sort of melted from time or just the way that that lure was designed. 
And while we're on the subject of current Pradco brands, let's talk about a very unique offering from Head & Lures, the Cobra. In 1964, Head and joined the minnow feeding frenzy with the introduction of the Cobra minnow. Head was definitely a little late to this party, and it is hard to say if this was intentional or just the fact they took some extra time to design that bait. I do have a couple of old school Cobras in my tackle box. Uh, here they are in the package, and we'll definitely pop these things out and take a closer look. So this one comes to us from Ace Hardware. Uh, a Cobra available one time for $1.57. I do love this era of head and box. I'm not a head and expert by any means, so I won't talk about how old this lure might be. And there's a little sheet in here as well. We'll see if this has anything interesting to say about this minnow bait. Well, the description on the Cobra is pretty short and sweet. It says your Cobra is a floating diving bait. When retrieved with a steady speed, it will dive with a fast minnow-like wiggle with a maximum depth of two to three feet. And here is a Cobra. What's interesting to me about the Cobra is at a time when a lot of lure companies were working with easier to make plastic baits that were much more duplicatable, Hedden went the other direction with the all wooden Cobra. While this thing does not look like a Rappel and Minnow in many ways, it definitely has sort of that handcrafted flair to it. The Cobra is a short minnow, definitely a very thin, petite bait. It's got a uh, kind of elongated diving lip, a nice white belly. This one comes with just two hooks, as did a lot of the Cobras at the time. It does have a little bit of a ridge on the back. It's definitely got sort of a keel to it almost. Uh, but a definitely a good-looking minnow just the same. Now let's hold this thing up side by side with the uh, Rapala and we'll see what that looks like. So yeah, this is definitely an inch shorter and I know that the Cobra does come in a longer one. I just don't happen to have it. And I've got a hunch with that extended lip, the Cobra probably dives a little bit deeper than the Rapala. I also have a Cobra in another cool color I just have to show you just because this thing is a neat, neat looking bait. Look at that piece of old school gold. <laughs> and on the bottom, it says Hedden Wooden Cobra. The next bait on this list comes to us from Smithwick Lures, and though they were late to the party in 1969, Smithwick definitely made a grand entrance with the introduction of the Rogue. I don't know if this was the first foray into plastic baits that Smithwick had, but it was definitely one of the early ones. After a lot of success with baits like the Devil's Horse and the Devil's Toothpick, it is kind of cool to see that they came out with a bait like the Rogue. I do have a number of rogues in my collection and whew, this has to be aesthetically one of my favorite minnow baits out there. It does have a different shape than uh, the Rapala and some of the others, but it certainly has that minnow bait flair. The Smithwick does come with a pretty delicate lip and I could totally see you snapping that off if you ever cast it into a dock or honestly, even a lily pad. It is a pretty, pretty delicate thing. I do have this bait in a couple of different colors. I'll show you. And some of my favorites, oof. The old bass. <laughs> Silver, green, and orange. Clown. I love this one. I think this is the old Ted Lake and Special, the old gold, orange, and black. We'll go ahead and hold a Rogue up next to the old school Rapala. And yeah, you know, there are some similarities and some differences. It looks like the Rogue has got a little bit of a higher back to it, but it's got the same tapered minnow shape. We'll go ahead and look at these things from the nose. And underneath. A 
later Rogue would come out with the Super Rogue, and this is really a different bait altogether, and honestly almost looks like a different genre of bait than the original Rapala Minnow. And this one is a spinny bait, I believe. In the late 1960s, lure designer Cotton Cordell introduced his own version of the plastic minnow, the Redfin. Though the lure is now known for success in saltwater, it started out as a cheaper alternative to the Rapala for anglers fishing in the newly impounded lakes like Sam Rayburn. I do have a couple of red fins in my tackle box. Here is one of them. And I would say the biggest advancement of this bait compared to its predecessors is that it has the lip molded into the bait itself. So you're gonna get even more consistency with the action. Let's go ahead and hold a red fin up against the Rapala so we can see what those two look like. And yeah, honestly, almost the two most different baits that we've had so far. Really very few similarities. You can hardly call the red fin a ripoff of the Rapala. And I, while they might fish the same, they're definitely, definitely different looking baits. I've also got some pretty cool old school red fins in some more saltwater patterns and I'll have to break these out in a future episode, but here's a little preview of some of those baits. Barfish. I don't know what you call that one. And mackerel. We'll crack this thing over real quick and you can get a look at this. This is definitely not your uh, dainty freshwater bait. It only comes with two hooks, but they are Pretty stout, robust saltwater hooks. And a pretty sick paint scheme as well. Oof! I'd still catch a bass though. Just a, a big one. The bomber long air arrived on the scene in 1977 and structurally it is definitely the most robust of the minnow baits that I have fished. I grew up throwing this one primarily which was the KVD suspending long A but that is probably a bomber for a another day. Sticking with the floating minnow bait theme of today though, there are a couple of nice OG bombers in my tackle box, including this number, oof. <laughs> as well as this special run fire tiger. I've also got some long A's and some more traditional colors. And here is an OG gold one that, yeah, I got a feeling uh, we'll be throwing down in Florida before too long. We'll go ahead and hold the bomber up side by side with the Rapala and man, yeah, you almost, uh, it's just a different class of bait altogether. The bomber is thicker and heavier at almost every angle. Look at how dramatic the difference is there. Let's go check out the bellies. Almost like a just completely different genre of bait. Uh, I've got to do a weight check on this, but yeah, for me, I, this is definitely one that I almost always throw on bait casting tackle. A lot of the other minnows in this box I save for my spinning gear, except this one. This one I can definitely chunk and wind uh, on even an OG bait caster five and a half foot pistol grip outfit. And yeah, um, I know Ted says gold's been the ticket down there, but I might just have to throw this one. Oof, that's a nasty looking bass color, isn't it? We've talked about some of the more well-known old school minnow baits out there, but honestly, there's probably too many brands and too many varieties to properly cover in an episode like this. One of the ones I do have a couple of is this unique offering from Pose. This is the Cruise Minnow. This is a pretty hefty looking bait and honestly not one that I've had a ton of luck with. Uh, for whatever reason, this thing didn't have a ton of action when I threw it. Perhaps it was the gear that I threw it on. Um, so I kind of gave up and put it away in the tackle box. It is a pretty cool looking bait though. And honestly, anything from Pose I love. I've got a feeling this thing is probably made from California Redwood Cedar. And we'll hold this side by side with a wrapper so you can see, but Definitely a much more robust looking bait. I've got a lot of uh, pre rapala Storm baits, but I don't have a ton of this one, which is the Thunderstick. This one I actually think is the Thunderstick Junior. 
I definitely need to get my hands on more of these and probably do a little bit more research so I can intelligently discuss this offering. But I did at least want to show you a quick glance at one of these Storm Minnow Baits, even if it is the uh, tiny model. Here's one I only have one of, and this is uh, a pretty interesting one from Whopper Stopper. It might have later been released by Hedden as well when they acquired Whopper Stopper, but this one is called the Hellcat. Uh, this is an all-plastic bait with a lip. Um, only thing really of note is the reinforcement on the lip. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's got a little bit of extra plastic. I don't know if that's in response to baits like the Smithwick that had really fragile lips. Uh, but either way, there is one from Whopper Stopper. We'll do a side-by-side -side with the Rappel and Minnow so you can see what those two look like. from the front and also from the bottom. And I don't know enough to know if this is actually an AC Shine or not, but this was sent to us by a Bass and Bud a little while ago. And a lot of the folks in the comment section said, this looks like an AC Shiner, which is uh, another one of the early wooden versions of a Rapala minnow bait imitation. I did mention what started this whole crazy minnow bait obsession and subsequent episode was an initial conversation I had with Bass and Bud Ted Lincoln. Well, Ted and I were supposed to go fishing next week in Central Florida on his 1986 Sea Nymph bass boat. Unfortunately, on the way back from the lake last week, some sort of short in the battery compartment started a massive fire on the boat and Ted's boat and his body too were both badly damaged in the fire. To help with both boat damages and body damages, Ted started a PayPal GoFundMe and I'll drop a link for that down below. Uh, definitely want to see Ted get on the mend and also get that 1986 Sea Nymph, which he got from his father up and running again. While there are probably as many ways to fish floating minnow baits as there are different baits out there, I will leave you with a tip from Ted Lincoln on how he likes to fish the minnow. And while I do that, definitely go ahead and like and follow his channel, Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life. I will drop that one down below. So according to Ted, his favorite way to fish is a big golden shiner colored Rapala. He likes to use it as a topwater twitch bait in holes of thick cover like coontail, hydrilla, and lily pads. Ted likes to cast the bait out and let it sit like a popper and then do one or two short twitches and let it float up for just a second. Another technique that Ted recommends is to rip it through that same coontail hydrilla and pop it off the grass like a lipless crankbait, only in much shallower water. Then he'll stop it and let it float to the surface after a few pulls. Well, thanks again to Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life for the inspiration for this episode and to Bass Fishing Archives for the know-how. If you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up and not on fire, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.